And if this boss kill speed is even like vaguely respectable, I uh I I I will hereby retire. I will I will retire from video games. Oh my god, it shreds. Well, I gotta be honest with you. If this build even vaguely works, I mean, is even vaguely viable, I give up. I give up. I give up on trying to have smart ideas and trying to make good content and trying to make good builds. I just give up. Because why, why should I try? What's the... To, to, to what end am I over here, like, attempting stuff? You know? When you can kind of just do whatever. You just put on piles of gear and it kind of doesn't matter what you do. And you can just kind of go. No point in trying to do smart stuff. No more thoughts. Just... Just big numbers go boom. Big numbers go boom. Don't need to do smart stuff. Don't need to... Don't need to worry about making good builds. Don't need to make build guides. Why make a build guide? You can just put on piles of gear. Doesn't matter. Oh. Don't want to die. I need more time. Yep. Ah. Oh. oh. This, uh, this was my fear. Doesn't matter. You don't need to min max. You don't need to agonize over individual points on a paragon board before you upload it. Who cares? Just put on the biggest, coolest gear that you can find. The cooler the name on the piece of gear. Oh, did I just survive a lightning strike? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I did that. That, that should actually, that should be physically impossible. I have no concept of how I survived that lightning strike. Now let me go ahead and swap up the energy a little bit because for most people, this is actually pretty sick and I kind of want to go through how all of it works together. I've taken some inspiration from people like Sir K who are just like, hey, did you ever think about the fact that Black River and Ringulus Sacrilegious on Sever just means infinite essence? And I went, I haven't really thought about that and I wanted to go test it out myself and I thought, well, let's go ahead and take it a step further. People in chat recently, a person by the name of Fuzzy was like, hey, I'm doing like crazy millions of damage on pure corpse explosion. It's doing really well. And I went, well, this is like a perfect opportunity to go back, revisit Black River, do something I've never really done before, and just kind of answer the question, what if you did just go and equip every single piece of cool, unique gear that you ever found, and then made sure to at least be like a little bit competent when putting it together, throwing on at least one good survivability aspect and probably the most powerful damage aspect that you could that could apply to all of the build. So let's kind of touch on how every single piece of gear unironically works together and I kind of hate that but it's it's good it, it means that the game is doing cool stuff it just makes my heart a little bit sad but I'll touch on that in a quick second so like I said it kind of all stems from Black River and Sacrilegious I was talking with Sir K recently you may not personally know that name but basically they're a really smart theory crafter for the game and they said hey Black River eats Five corpses, sacrilegious, automates corpse explosion. That means that you're generating an insane amount of essence every single time that this procs, and then you can basically infinitely cast sever. And I went, oh, you know what? That is kind of cool. I personally like to use exposed flesh, but I understand the combination of these two things. Now, I don't personally like it for other builds that like don't directly scale with those types of damage, uh, because I think you should just be using better aspects, but I, I understand how it works here. And I finally farmed Duriel enough to actually get a 925 black. Black River with perfect rolls for the corpses, the hued flesh, and the damage. While the intelligence isn't perfect, what can you do? Not everything can be perfect. But I at least finally had the tool that I would need to really test it out. 
So what do you do with the basic conceit of corpse explosion damage and Sever as a proc tool? Well, obviously you're going to use Greaves of the Empty Tomb. This makes it so that Sever leaves behind a damage over time, a little desecrated ground area. You can see it better here. And what that basically means is that we get to have good movement speed, good essence cost reduction, and then lucky hit chance and damage reduction, which is super important here. And then an additional proccing tool for blighted as well as like shadow blight, ticking up all of our shadow damage. And then the added benefit of proccing as many corpses from huge flesh as physically possible. These two things in concert are pretty good, but let's make sure that we can handle our essence appropriately. So we're gonna throw on Tabalt's will. Tabalt's will, obviously everybody is using it, but you metamorphosis that gets you unstoppable. And then if you've spent all your essence via sever, and then you just dash, you get all your essence back and then on top of that it also has damage reduction from close it has maximum resource we get even more essence to be able to spam through and then that big damage bonus so anytime we go into blood mist or we dash we have a 1.4 damage multiplier just from our pants and it helps to shore up the fact that we don't really have any other offensive aspect slots here but probably the most obvious inclusion to the build is how from below how from below is going to be another multiplier for our corpse explosion damage which is what we're ultimately trying to do damage with it has really good lucky hit chance on the base gloves gives us some staggering ability with the lucky hit chance there for bosses and then on top of that just general survivability against your basic mobs and then it also allows our corpses to follow along with us so all of a sudden we're not leaving behind any super valuable ammunition and we can eat up five corpses and send it running into a pack of monsters well i've talked about lucky hit chance a whole bunch here because it turns out that every single darkness build ultimately ends up being a lucky hit chance build. And what better way of stacking on additional lucky hit chance than with the only chest armor in the game that gives you a lucky hit chance. On top of that, since we are using shielding storm, we have barrier 100% of the time. So this armor goes from a pretty okay version of a survivability tool to something that says maximum life damage from close plain damage reduction, and then 15% lucky hit chance. On top of that, it does allow you to just kind of generate barrier on demand, which isn't great. I end up just wasting a ton of my potions, hoping to out heal some poison damage, but it's here, it does its work, and it adds on that lucky hit chance that we desperately need since the rest of our gear can't have it in places that we typically would like it to. And then obviously any shielding storm package wouldn't be complete without a lidless wall. Lidless wall gets us attack speed, which is actually probably one of its more important stats here in addition to the proliferation of bone storms. But if as long as you have a bone storm on the ground somewhere or on yourself, whenever you cast sever out there, basically 100% of the time, you're gonna trigger a bone storm on targets. And on top of that, when you are using metamorphosis when you evade through a target even though they're technically inside your bone storm since you're traveling over them metamorphosis actually replaces your evade with a teleport so you're not actually physically in that location but your bone storm damage travels over it so this allows you to actually trigger bone storms on areas that you are technically traveling over because of that weird change in how it takes evade turns it into a teleport skill. And then on top of that, like it is a shield, so while it's not maximum damage, it is giving us more survivability from its chance to block. And then it has maximum life chance to restore essence as well as maximum essence. So again, working very similarly to Tibalt's will to almost passively increase our chances of just being able to permanently spam sever. Now that's the pile of unique items. Let's just like very quickly talk about the helmet and the amulet, cause you do need good stats somewhere or you will just die. For the helmet, lucky hit chance, total armor, maximum life. This is where I'm putting shielding storm. Then you can either have like cooldown reduction or ranks to decrepify or resistance here. I just quite literally already had a helmet with at least three of the good stats in shielding storm on it. And I'm not trying to waste aspects just in case this build ended up being complete trash. And then for the amulet movement speed, so you can at least have some decent mobility here since we can't use a mobility aspect. And then you would ultimately like total armor, damage reduction from close or damage reduction from shadowed, and then gloom ranks. And then this is where we're putting blighted. Blighted pound for pound is gonna be the best total multiplier of damage on this build. Going through the economy of, I only have two aspects, what will I pick? I chose the best survivability aspect and then the best damage aspect that a darkness build could get its hands on. Oh, and I completely forgot it, but and then I just threw on an X-Falls ring. Why did I throw on X-Falls ring? Almost kind of spitefully. We're not actually trying to scale crit damage. This would just be strictly better as another offensive aspect slot with better stats on it for shadow damage over time and corpse explosion. Since we are doing a rank 12 corpse explosion right now, and this could technically get higher if we were wearing competent legendary pants, and then I could also throw on a Shaco as opposed to rocking the Tibalts, but 
I didn't really want to also include Ubers because I thought that this would be absolutely ridiculous at that point. X Falls Ring effectively doesn't really do a lot for the build. The crit damage is fine. We're kind of scaling it a little bit, but I would much rather prefer a stronger aspect here, even if I just ended up moving Blighted down to here so I could throw Disobedience up here and actually round out all the survivability on here. Because without a total armor roll right now, you're not going to hit 10k armor. So you'll notice we're not even like armor capped for any of that. And we just like absolutely breezed through all of it. Then for the Book of the Dead, we have Reapers for the shadow damage here. We have Cold Mages for the vulnerable sack. And then I'm currently using like either Blood for Maximum Life. I was actually using Bone during this video for the increased attack speed, but either one of these are fine. And then for the skill trait, you need two points here. I did max out Sever with Paranormal Sever. I don't have the points to get up to Imperfectly Balanced. It would be nice if I could do that because it turns out that Sever is doing like a decent amount of the damage here, but ultimately what we're really looking to proc is as many corpse explosions as possible. So obviously maxing out hued flesh, one point into blood mist, getting corpses out of blood mist, maxing out corpse explosion with blighted, maxing out grim harvest because that's our primary tool for generating all of our essence via sacrilegious with the black river, and then maxing out fueled by death as well. Down here, just the one point into decrepify for abhorrent, three points into amp, three points into death's embrace, a single point into Corpse Tendrils with the ability to apply Vulnerable. And we're maxing out both Gloom as well as Terror and then only one point into Reaper's Pursuit and Crippling Darkness. And then maxing out Standalone along with Memento Mori, Bone Storm, and then obviously Shadow Blight. I want to point this out very quickly. Every single time I get into a Paragon board, I always want to point this out. But this is Hyper Scuffed. I legit just took my Infinimus build and then vaguely changed it to put in glyphs that would be stronger for a corpse explosion version of the build, but your personal mileage is definitely going to vary if you actually sit here and min-max this board. Like I said, it is now, sorry, 5.30 in the morning uh, and I haven't slept, so I don't have the brain juice to do it for you. But in the starter board, sacrificial for the 1.1 damage multiplier and then the bonuses to armor. You really need armor on this build. Up into Wither, taking everything. And then here's where I'm putting Scourge for a big shadow damage over time, as well as the 1.1 multiplier against shadow damage targets. Coming up into Flesh Eater, I put Darkness here as the biggest intelligence board for the additional damage reduction in the shadow damage, obviously picking up the Flesh Eater node. Over into Scent of Death, we are picking up Ruin. I actually don't even meet the requirements for Ruin, that's actually kind of funny. I went over to Deathbringer, literally just for the armor nodes here, and then I had an additional point, obviously picking up the legendary node. And then here's where I'm putting Exhumation for the corpse skill damage, as well as the fortifying the DR from consuming a corpse, and then picking up all the armor nodes over on Preservation. Then lastly, coming down into Bloodbath, this is where I'm putting Exploit for the vulnerable glyph, so we get like the most consistent damage that we can apply to the targets. And then for our vampire powers to be able to round all this out and really make it kind of mesh well together. Metamorphosis, for every reason you would use Metamorphosis. Flowing Veins, make sure to jump over your boss with Metamorphosis to apply Vampiric Curse here for the big 1.6 damage for damage over time. Ravenous for the attack speed, because it turns out the faster that I can cast Sever, the faster I can generate corpses, the faster that my Black River can eat 5 corpses to output as much damage over time as possible. Hemomancy was originally for the survivability. I think this is actually trash and you should be using almost anything else. Maybe Sanguine for the additional Fortify here. Resilience would be a really good option for the damage reduction. Even Domination for an additional multiplier when you pull everything in together would actually be like huge. I think I would much rather have Domination on this entire time. In fact, basically Hemomancy was just a completely dead vampiric power. And then obviously Anticipation, because being able to cast Bone Storm more often is obviously very good. Just in case you ran out of Bone Storms while you were traveling and you weren't able to propagate them with Leadless Wall. Oh, and it turns out that like, as long as you're willing to drop Soul Brand, because you do need Shielding Storm somewhere, you can also just throw on Shaco, and then you have like the consistent damage reduction and the cooldown reduction and the maximum life. And then you also get the four ranks to your Corpse Explosion. And then as long as you get three ranks to Corpse Skills on your Amulet as well. And if you were willing to like lose the Tobal Twill, then you can have the max corpse explosion package on this thing as well. It's just nutty. All of it's just nutty. It's absolutely bananas. Just equip every single unique item that you find in the game. There's no wrong way to do it. You just kind of put them on and then you're infinitely powerful and maybe people will explore whether or not that's detrimental or problematic in the future. But hey, you don't need to. You found every cool unique and you get to play this awesome build. Let me know what you'd think down in the comments. As always, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel if you're new, 
If you're new here and you liked this and you thought it was cool, let YouTube know by going ahead and clicking that button. I'd really appreciate it. Throw a like onto the video as well. That helps me out a ton. But again, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope that it helps. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.